Hello, Brother Monroe here. Welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts and to the German campaign, where it is now January 1920. There's not really been too much happening in this uh, period of peace. Uh, I've got a few conquest missions that have gone off, but uh, I did say it was probably going to be France next, and it looks like, yes, indeed, war with France. I've just unlocked the Mark 5 5 inch guns. I was just about to start recording anyway so that i could uh <laughs> um oh we failed to get the cat verdes that's disappointing right well you can all form up in a little squadron then to try and take sierra leo so i've just just been using the ss2s for this um as well we did take the antilles yes we did uh, so we've got our big ships here uh we're on uh, invasion duty. So, obviously, with the French now declaring war, we're going to have to deal with them. So, I'm going to temporarily reassign this fleet to... Uh, yeah, I'm going to assign them to uh, the Balearic Islands. This is the SS-5s and the KK-2s. They're going to blockade uh, the southern coast of France. Meanwhile, we're going to get the other ships to blockade the Bay of Biscay, I think. So we can move all of those. Uh, I should move a couple of destroyers down here. Uh, right, we also have a bunch of battleships, SS-4s. For the most part, we also have the Bremen, but uh, I'm going to keep her back for invasion. Well, possibly not for invasion duties, but uh, yep, move her. Stop Krieger. Yeah, we've got a whole bunch of stuff here. This is SS threes, but we do have an SS five in there. And a KK2. So that, that should establish a fairly meaty blockade. Possibly even enough that I can start a naval invasion of Western... No, Western France is too difficult. Yeah, all of these are going to be too difficult to navally invade. So the other ships uh, are going to join down here. Uh, well, the capital ships anyway. And we are going... Two. Uh, she's mothballed. We're going to start uh, conquering, basically. Uh, that's the plan. We'll start conquering the remaining bits of French North Africa. Uh, is anyone else likely to jump in again against this as well? Yes, Japan. But as we saw with Japan, we can just kind of leave them to it until they say <laughs> they've only got seven battleships left. Okay, uh, until they send a blob, and then when the blob arrives, we can we can sink the blob. Um, <laughs> oh dear me! Uh, that's the SS one, two destroyers. Uh, oh yeah, we've got the Bremen. That's it. So, that is the plan for the war. Just blockade France, and then munch, munch all of these colonies. Uh, take all of their African holdings. Uh, and then once we've done that, there's still a few things that they have in the Caribbean. It's probably worth looking at as well. I might go Africa, Caribbean and then deal with this stuff um because they'll have yeah they've got things over here as well so that's that's the rough plan because we're here anyway uh but yes that's the plan and i'll be back when there's some action well i did say japan right <laughs> so what with britain and france okay that makes things complicated france and the soviet union france and spain germany and japan and we get a port strike splat 
okay. <laughs> we immediately start some offensives. I should check on uh, France's state, actually. No, no. I'm going to refuse all of those uh, now that we are at war. I'm going to take uh, all ships that are currently in being, put them on sea control, and our mothball fleet. Uh, I don't think we need them. I think they can quite happily sit where they are and, uh, you know, just sit there being quiet little uh, <laughs> museum ships. I don't think we will need them. Um, again, think of them as uh, training ships, basically. Uh, but we do have a convoy battle. And it's a GK3. Okay, first time we get to see the GK3 in combat. The Reknitz. No flaws. Uh, it's against the Circe class cruisers. Chasseloup Loba. And La Glacionaire. And seven transports. And we also have a Z4. So, new ships in action. Very exciting. Very exciting. I have also uh, been looking at the Light Cruiser 5, um, again, off camera, and it is a tr truly, truly dreadful hull that uh, is virtually unusable because, and you'll know which hull I'm talking about if you play the game, at the rear of the ship, this is one of these uh, ship's boat um, assets. Now, normally these disappear when you place something near them, but the Light Cruiser 5 has a pair just here that will never disappear. And they block guns when they uh, when they are there. They, they count as a collision object. So it's virtually impossible to build any sort of sensible looking design on that hull. So Germany is going to end up with a single Light Cruiser design. And given that, I really want it to have triple turrets so that it looks like a, a baby GK3. So, the LK2 project is on hold again <laughs> while I get the text. There's a Z4. Z4s, I quite, kind of like them. Kind of like them. Very, uh, very cute little ship. I mean, you say cute. It is a two and a half, or nearly two and a half thousand ton destroyer. But uh, a chance for the new ships of the German Navy to show what they are made of. Weather's not the best. We do have RDF though, which makes things a little bit easier in terms of tracking enemy ships down. Uh, they can't be too far away, surely. There we go. Come up on the transport straight away. Wow, that was a, was a pretty heavy hit straight away there. Now I'd start surrendering as well. Hoping on the weather hiding it. Should have turned your radios off.
torpedoes out from the cruiser as well. Keep forgetting that this thing has a battery of underwater torpedo launchers. I don't think the cruisers are interested in fighting, but I'm also not sure that they have sufficient speed to get away. GK3s can do 32 knots. Um, uh, other ships I am planning, uh, yes, uh, definitely the advanced armoured cruisers. I do have the first one. Uh, there's no rush, though. Um, all the hulls that I've unlocked are available until the end of the game. Um, so, yeah, there's absolutely no no rush. So, I'm focusing on trying to get supporting technologies like advanced Mark 11 guns, uh, Mark 11, 11-inch uh, 11 guns at a high mark. Yeah, look at this. This is a pre-Dreadnought era protected cruiser against a modern heavy cruiser. Only it's only a modern one, but uh, still. Poor thing, it's going to only do 22 knots. It's very difficult for them to get away. Seems like an ambitious torpedo launch. at all. Oh, hits but it's dead. And they surrender. <laughs> Fair enough. Trained crews only on these ships. My ships, I mean. Because they are pretty fresh. No combat experience. Well, they do now, but... It's their first battle. Just about to put a full broadside into her. But she sinks anyway. Righty then. Good, good, good. Uh, well, I guess I'll be back when there's some more fighting. Welcome back. I just unlocked Mark IV uh, 11 inch guns, which was one of the texts I was waiting for, so that we can start work on something a little bit different. This is going to be the SK 1. So this is going to be different from our existing GK designs, which uh, use 8-inch uh, guns, and different from full-on battleships or uh, fight cruisers, 
the KKs and the SS uh, ships. Um, this is going to be a Schwerer cruiser, aka a heavy cruiser, in the German sense of the word heavy, or if you prefer, super cruiser. <laughs> um, now, we can use the awesome triangular tower. I really like that superstructure. And the rear towers are a bit rubbish, but we'll use the, uh, the matching one, the small secondary tower. And we're going to try and build a ship with nine 11-inch guns. That's the plan. That is a very, very heavy armament, but I think we can make it work. Yeah, so we're going to go for nine 11-inch uh, 50 caliber guns as the primary armament. So, they, I don't know the length on the Scharnhorsts off the top of my head, uh, but that that's a Scharnhorst level of armament. Um, we do need secondaries. I would love it to be the classic German. Oh, we could as well. Uh, yeah, those five inch are just slightly too big. You can fit one pair of triples each side, like that, but that's a bit naff. Uh, we've got two inch Mark IVs though. It's probably a more sensible option because we can fit a whole bunch of those. Oh, actually, if we go for twins instead, we can fit even more. Give me a moment. Aesthetics very important, of course. Uh, yeah, put one there and one there. Does that interfere with uh, rear turret? A little bit. Okay, so not that one. But uh, yeah, if we put on some twin, twin two-inch guns for now, I think the twins look better um, as a as a secondary shooing away armament. Uh, yes, I think we can make something pretty good here. These things can do twenty-nine base. That puts them. Uh, that puts them... How fast is the KK2? Uh, Why can't I see the KK2 design? I don't even have that many. I can't see it. I'm blind. <laughs> I can only see the KK1. I can't see the KK2. In the list. There it is. Um, they can also do 29. So, yeah, it's kind of sitting between our existing uh, ships. Wow, those guns that are right at the top look really funny. <laughs> okay. Cool. We're going to go standard crew. We're going to use oil. And we're going to experiment with diesels. We've got the Marine Diesel 2. I love double diesels in the campaign. And we're going to go for maximum range. These things are going to be... Well, not so much raiders, but... Uh, hunters, I think is the best way of putting it. These are going to hunt down enemy ships. Although, the weight is making me a little bit concerned. Jesus... Auto loaders. Uh, yeah. We are going overweight and I haven't even put the armor on. That is concerning. Maybe because I don't have all of this. Yeah, reducing the range does help a bit. But there's no way I'm going to be able to armor this 
to the level that I want. Do I have to wait for some more text? Do I need Crook 5 and things for this? Do I need the bigger displacement? Ugh. It's so irritating. This is looking like a really fun ship. And it's like, ah, it doesn't work with the weights. Because I would want uh, probably even more armor than they've got. If I put on the armor that I'd like on this ship, I'm going to end up so far over. Yeah, 227%. I'd love to do it, but uh, it's not happening. Not yet. Although, even at the maximum displacement, 18,900 tons. Maybe if I make it fatter, I can... can do that and make a really really big ship but we don't have the text for that just now I'm hard locked ah, it's annoying it's such a fun fun one we could build the modern heavy cruiser well the one and the two are so similar uh, the two has the same problem because you really want the max length one uh, the small one is so fat when you put the towers on, like they don't even fit the good towers. Uh, so once again, I'm thwarted <laughs> in my efforts to design a ship. God damn it, game. Damn you. <laughs> and yeah, just to show you what I was talking about with this. See, these these, these ones, these boats are fine. I'm gonna grab a gun. Right, look, put a gun there. And, or there. And they still fire through. And yeah, the boats disappear. But these boats... No, 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 no. These boats are very important and must not be taken off for any reason whatsoever. And it's so annoying because you can't put anything here. Even if you put like a barbet in. Uh, like you have... So you have to have a barbet here. You have to. And then even if you're trying to put a gun here... It doesn't really work. So I thought, oh, what about if I use uh, this one? Actually, maybe that one won't be as bad. Yeah, so you, uh, maybe we can get this to work. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> this, was, this was pissing me off, but if I can get around it. Can get around it. That would be huge. Uh, important. Torpedo launcher. Six inch guns. Please tell me you fire. Yes, you do. So we could do something like this. Looks very weird with the gap tooth. Uh, and I still have a forward weight offset. Forward weight offset on that ship. It's going to look even weirder then. I might have to do trickery with the tower. Uh, so this, so maybe we are building the LK2. It's not what I expected when I came in. Uh, to the designer. Right. Oil. Diesels. I think it's important to say in the campaign, and I've said it before a few times, um... Do not build a ship that does not do what you need it to do. Like, if you're looking at a ship and you're like, even if you've completely finished the design, oops, sorry about that, and it just doesn't work, don't, don't build it. If it doesn't fulfill your purpose, because... You have them for so long. Yeah, okay, weights are working really nicely on this. Uh, can we make those guns 45 in... Uh, 45 caliber. We 
Okay. So six inch 45s. Eight of them. I did say I wanted triples, but uh, we we have plenty of weight remaining and we have the other light cruiser hull. So the other light cruiser can have the triples. There can be more of a, a trade protection ship, I guess. Uh, armor, yes. <laughs> okay, we can't go can't go completely insane, but we can uh, make it pretty well armored. And still have a ton of spare displacement. Uh, spacious quarters. Okay, then. Uh, can we make it 10,000 tons even? And we can start pushing speed, I guess. Uh, it's not very efficient to do this, but we do have the displacement to spare. Push the cost up. Yeah. 34 seems like the good a good compromise. And we've got spare displacement for refits or something. Still have a bit of a forward weight offset, which again amazes me. Quite how we have a forward weight offset when look look where the engine rooms are. <laughs> it just Bizarre. There's hardly anything at the front here. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Uh, so, yeah, we'll do that. And I think think we're all good, to be honest, on this. Hmm. Well, I wasn't expecting to have the LK2s, uh, which means we will have an LK3. But uh, yeah, those stupid boats are ending up with a very weird looking ship. But uh, the ugly sister of the <laughs> German Navy, I'll order up a bunch of these and I'll get them named and I'll uh, I'll see you on the uh, fleet screen. All right, there we go. I've ordered 16 of them. Uh, and again, I'm just going to let the AI spread them around. Uh, so that we have ships to protect our now rather large empire. Uh, conquest uh, of Sierra Leone, which was something we were doing before the war, should tick over next turn to success, uh, which means we will then start on Portuguese Guinea. Uh, and how's the fleet getting on? Yes, they have entered the Med. So we should be blockading France quite soon. What do they even have? Four battleships, two battlecruisers, 25 heavies, 29 lights, 17 destroyers. 700,000 tons total. That's quite a lot. Uh, we're at 130-ish. Hmm. Okay. All right, let's have a look at this convoy battle. What do we got? A, a GK2 and a GK3 found a Devastation class. Two of them. Transport each that they are guarding, but... Uh, yes, I... Uh, I don't think this is going to go too well for them. I don't feel the need to uh, rush. I am disappointed. I did want to get the first the SK-1 under construction, but uh, obviously there are issues with that. Might be worth popping a tech priority on the cruiser design so we can get the uh, limit on the um, limit on the cruisers increased to, what was it, 20-ish 20, thousand tons. Maybe try and get Group 5 unlocked. Help with the weight issue. 
Hello. <laughs> the French cruisers flash firing. Again, France is still using ancient ships. I mean, I have taken Paris. Might have something to do with it. But, but still... It's now seasoned after that uh, convoy battle last month. Down goes the Colmar. Nice and drag. Going to try and finish off the uh, Edgar Quinet. And she goes. And those two transports are going to last approximately two minutes. I know you've got a lot of those ships, but you're really going to have to put on a better show than that. Right, I'm going to head back to the map, I'm going to end the turn, and I'm going to see what happens. Alright, uh, Sierra Leone has fallen to the Marines, and I've ordered Portuguese Guinea invaded. Uh, the Storm Diego, though, has found the Admiral Shana in a one-on-one -on -one duel. Shouldn't be too much of a trouble. For the uh, Storm Jaeger. Really not impressed with those Devastation class. GK2's still pretty formidable ships, even though they have uh, a newer, <laughs> faster, more heavily armed descendant. Starting to hit home. Clinging on, but uh, <laughs> oh, somehow just about avoiding the ship flooding out. Good damage control there. Oh, that's going to make it worse again. 
Oh, oh, oh. Oh, there we go. In the end, they lost that battle, but they did well there. Some of that flooding control. Anyway, that was all there was this month. I'm going to end the turn, and I'll be back in a moment. All right, it's not a party until uh, everyone starts coming. Uh, yeah, we're at war with the United States. Lovely. Um, well, uh, you know what that means? That means we need to send a ship over to annoy the Americans. And uh, what better ship to send than the Yorick? She's going back on holiday. She's going to head back to Freeport. Uh, to annoy the Americans. Should be uh, plenty of ships for her to uh, attack, even if it is just convoys and things. Uh, have we got any other ships I can pop down? Uh, I think we have pretty much everything at sea at this point. Uh, okay, I should send a battle cruiser somewhere <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying anymore anyway we have started the naval invasion down here it's got a hundred percent chance to succeed so that should be fine uh, we're also moving on land into French Guinea that should work what's uh, France's army logistics at no it's at a hundred okay uh, anyway we'll invade there and then we'll invade here uh, with the Americans joining in my plan to go from uh, West Africa to the Caribbean makes more sense because we can we can finish the invasions here, then we can go hit to uh, uh, French Guinea. Although uh, the army is uh, maybe going to do that for us, but we can hit the French Antilles, Puerto Rico, uh, Guantanamo Bay, um, etc., uh, and then you know, try and take Panama, Costa Rica, and all the, all, all of Central America, uh, off the Americans. Um, plenty, plenty to do. Plenty to do. We have our blockading fleet down here, although we haven't initiated a blockade, which I'm kind of surprised by. We have absolutely tons of power projection everywhere. For, uh, for France, but it hasn't generated one, which I don't quite understand. Uh, they also own bits over here, which is interesting. Anyway, um, I'll be back when there's a battle to talk about. Ah, yes, the British have joined. Good, good, good. <sighs> uh, dearie me. Right, uh, they... Egypt wants an LK2, yes. Oh, by the way, we're allied with Egypt, which is kind of handy. Uh, I'd love to invade Portugal, but not right now. Uh, given that, I... Where's the... Where's one of the KK... Where are the KK2s at the moment? Uh, Western Med, Western Med, Bay of Biscay, Bay of Biscay. Okay. So I'm going to order one of the ones from the Bay of Biscay, probably the Scorpion, back to La Havre to menace the British. Uh, and I'm going to send one of the uh, KK2s here to Gibraltar, send the Halloween. Uh, just so that we have battle cruisers just sitting in port on sea control, which is usually the best way for them to generate missions. Um, uh, but yeah, this is actually quite a complicated war because these these are not allies. France is currently at war with Germany, Britain, America, Soviet Union, and Spain, and probably soon Japan. <laughs> Uh, although Britain and America are allied. Uh, the United States is at war with Italy and Austria-Hungary at the same time as France and Germany and China and Britain. Where are you? <laughs> yeah, Germany, France, Italy, Austria-Hungary and China. Okay, so a little bit, little bit weird. Anyway, are we, we're going to continue hitting uh, French North Africa. Uh, North Africa? West Africa. Uh, Caribbean. 
remains the plan. Um, just smash, smash the French. They're the ones who started it. All right, Portuguese Guinea has fallen. Uh, next, let's move on to French Guinea. Uh, yes, and that will end operations in this sea region. Uh, we will then have, although I should be able to invade the Ivory Coast from here. Not sure why it wasn't telling me that. Anyway, um, oh, that's because they are Central Atlantic and this is West Africa. That's why. So we'll have to move the ships down here and then we'll be able to invade the Ivory Coast and Gabon and the uh, Middle Congo. And then we will shift our focus to the Caribbean. Uh, Yorick's on her way. She's right next to a American battle cruiser, but apparently that doesn't generate a battle because battle generation is weird. Uh, but we do have a convoy up here, the Blonde and the Gurkha. Brisbane and Willoughby class. They both look AI generated to me. Uh, and two Z4s, the Z4-21 and the Z4-22 up for the fight. Uh, I... I'm still not very well. I'm still really suffering. So I am going to time lapse this. I hope you'll forgive me. Uh, it shouldn't be anything particularly shocking. And uh, I'll see you at the conclusion. I decided to let the escorts go if they can't be bothered uh, defending transports they can hang their heads in shame uh, and with that I'm going to head back to the map and end the turn and I'll see you uh, in the next month all right next up uh, we found some Americans the Pennsylvania class uh, I'm gonna assume that's an AI design and the California class also looking very AI ish uh, armored cruisers have blundered into the uh, the blockade fleet here. Um, yeah, I may not have uh, upgraded these since they were built, but uh, I'm pretty sure this is not going to go particularly well for the Americans. <laughs> nope. Sixteen inch hello. <laughs> Idrisil sinks one of them. Single hit. Instant kill. And they are running.
just a matter of time. Very long time. This is like me trying to. Anyone who's ever played the game Ludo will know perfectly well how annoying it is that you have to roll a six before you can start. In fact, any game that has that rule, any board game that has that rule, you've got to roll a six before you can put your piece on the board. Just delete that rule. <laughs> it's so annoying. I hit, but a partial bent. Now we're getting hits. Good, good, good. I swear, some crews just are unlucky. There we go. Hit, bit of ricochet. They can't escape. They might as well surrender. Oh well. Giving the gunnery crews some practice, I suppose. Sneaky little buggers. Really not be getting our partial pens. It's really an HE round. There we go. We're over over penning it. Done. Right, well that was simple enough. Uh, back to the map, end the turn, see what we get next month. All right, uh, we're now into September. Uh, invasion is looking quite promising uh, on French Guinea, although it's gonna take a while, five months. Uh, land defensives, I really should check on the land defensives. Uh, they are progressing. We do have enough force, so we might be able to take some of these on land, which will save some time. Uh, but there's still no blockade. I don't understand. I, I have enough power projection in the sea regions for France's home territories. More than enough. Even have enough power projection in their former home territories. I just, I don't, I don't get it. I just don't. Another thing I should do is dispatch battle cruiser back to the North Sea to start hunting. So I'm going to move. I think there was one here as well, wasn't there? Here's the Ramstein. I'm going to move her back to Emden uh, just to keep an eye on the Brits. Oh, she's going to go that way. Well, fair enough. Um, <laughs> We also have a convoy battle, the Isli, or Isle. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce that in French. Uh, guarding 12 transports. And you've got a bunch of destroyers. Again, I'm just going to time lapse this, save my voice a bit, and uh, I'll see you at the conclusion.
And once again, easy victory. Right, with that, I'm going to end the episode. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, I'll see you again soon for some more Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Bye for now.